Hey guys, so today we're going to be examining some of the teachings of Guillermo Maldonado. If you're not familiar with that name, Guillermo Maldonado is a senior pastor of a mega church down in Florida, and he is the leader of King Jesus Ministry, also located in Florida. So the reason I want to examine some of his teachings today is because in these teachings, I think we are going to see some very clear examples of tactics that are often used when people are being spiritually manipulative. But before we get to the teaching and my assessment of it, hello friends, my name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. If you could please take a second to subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it as it does help get good Christian content out on YouTube. Okay, so as I said in these clips, I think we're going to see really clear examples of spiritual manipulation taking place. So let's go ahead and watch these clips and then I'll come back and I will give a breakdown. And my goal in this is really so, yes, we can some, spread some awareness about Guillermo Maldonado and some of his really awful teachings. But more than that, it's so that we ourselves would have awareness, that we would see what spiritual manipulation looks like, and so that you can use this. If you see these sorts of tactics, these sorts of things taking place within your church, you know that you are in a bad atmosphere, a, a bad place, and you need to move on. All right, guys, with that, let's go ahead and get into our first clip. So there's so many people that, that because of this debt-free anointing on my mantle, they now working in their personal life and their churches and ministry around the world because they pick up that mantle of debt free. So I want to speak to the business people. If you're business people, you need to have that mentality. I want to change that to use money, to use somebody else's money for you to prosper and you're not getting into debt. I'm going to change the mindset. Oh, I wish I can hear an amen on that. So the Lord said, uh, once I release, and I say, Lord, what did you want me to, why, did, why, why you told me to build this debt free? The Lord said, it will be a pattern for the nations. It will be a pattern for so many people to live a debt free life. And without that a slavery and to be on, on debt, under the debt spirit. So the Lord said, I, I've seen many people, how they've been working and, and how they've been prospering. And because of the mantle of that free mantle and anointing upon my life. Um, so I, I can, uh, this is an anointing of multiplication. So you see in the day of Pentecost that I carry on my mantle. Anything that I do or anything that I impart that of people that come in connection with this mantle, my mantle, they see that I start prospering. And they start happening. Those people that believe. There's some people that don't believe. Well, it doesn't work for them. But both those people that believe, it worked for them. Can I hear an amen on that? All right, guys. So there are three things that I want to talk about with this first clip. Right at the very beginning, Guillermo said that there is a debt-free anointing under his mantle. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to go in-depth, although I could, about why that entire idea is Unbiblical. He does not have a debt-free anointing under his mantle. And I really want to address what I believe he is attempting to do with these sorts of statements. So for many people, when they look in the Old Testament, they see the stories of some of the prophets and they recognize that prophets often would have a mantle, which was a piece of clothing that they would carry. And it was a sign of the, the ministry that they had, that God was supporting and backing their ministry. And so when he uses that term, it's a very loaded term to say under my mantle. He is really elevating himself with a statement like that and talking about his debt-free anointing that's on his mantle. What he is doing here is he is elevating himself and saying, look, there is an anointing on my life. God is working with me in very special and unique ways that he's not working with other people. And he is doing this to make his people think that they really need to buy in to what he is saying. Along these lines, I, I, I didn't mention it before, but Guillermo Maldonado, and this is important to note, is a self-proclaimed apostle. In fact, I have a screenshot here of his YouTube channel. You see he calls himself Apostle Guillermo Maldonado. And I'd also like to point out the fact that he does not have a very small ministry. He's the pastor of a megachurch well over 100,000 subscribers. So this is not some fringe person that's out there. I mean, this is someone who is uh, very popular in the hyper-charismatic movement. 
And he calls himself apostle. Now think about that. We read the Bible and we see the apostles and we know these are people who were selected by Christ Jesus himself, right? And when you call yourself an apostle, what are you doing? You're doing the same thing. You are elevating yourself. And again, I'm not in this video going to get into the reason why Guillermo Maldonado, we can be certain is not an apostle. I'm not going to get in, but biblically, I can guarantee you he is not an apostle. We're not going to get into that. But when a person starts calling themselves an apostle, I mean, think about that. They have an apostolic authority and they are setting themselves up in such a way where you really better listen to them because they are the apostles. So that's the number one thing I want to say. If, if you have a pastor or a ministry leader who is often talking about their special anointing, their mantle, I'm an apostle, I'm a prophet, I'm all of these things, you really, there should be red flags <laughs> waving all around you because that is someone who is trying to make you feel like you should really be dependent upon their ministry. The second thing I want to point out is there are a couple of times in that clip where Guillermo says, the Lord said I needed to do this. And so he, he really sets it up like the Lord is speaking to him about the importance of this message. And that is the tactic that we need to be aware of. Guys, when people start saying, the Lord told me I need to share this with you because it's going to bring your breakthrough. Think about what they're doing. They are claiming that the Lord of glory gave them a personal message. So Think about if that had actually happened, which I can definitively say God did not speak to Guillermo to give him this message. But if the Lord did, then that would mean if you disobey this message, you are disobeying God. And that is often why people say it this way. The Lord told me. So I, it actually really bothered me the way that Guillermo talked about it as well, because he really was saying, oh, the Lord said, I've noticed how many people have prospered under your mantle. Almost like the Lord was impressed with Guillermo's work. And the Lord was like, oh, please share this with everybody else. You're doing such an amazing job. But this is the tactic you need to watch out for. People who are saying, the Lord gave me this message. The Lord told me this. Oftentimes they are doing that in order to get the person to feel like, oh, I better really listen to this word because this is coming from God. Okay, the third thing that I want to point out is that he mentioned at the end that this debt-free anointing that's under his mantle after he's built himself up, he said it's available to anybody who would come under his anointing, aka kind of be a part of his ministry, but it's only for those who are in it and who believe. See, that's more spiritual manipulation. You are telling people that if they want to get debt-free, and guys, who wouldn't want to be debt-free, okay? Like anybody would want to be debt-free. He's saying, well, if you want to be debt-free, the best way that you can do it is come under my authority. Sit under my ministry. Be a part of my church. This is spiritual manipulation. Once again, telling people that if you want this special thing to happen in your life, you need to come and sit under my ministry. We're going to watch a couple of uh, clips back to back here in just a second. But guys, I want to note this. If you're sitting under a pastor, under a ministry where the focus is not on Christ, the excellencies of Christ, and instead you frequently hear the leader talking about their ministry, what they are doing, how they have this anointing, how they have these mantles. Guys, that is not a Christian biblical ministry. That is not someone you should be listening to. Anyone who is a true pastor is going to be getting the focus off of themselves. They will not be boasting of themselves. They will boast about Christ and they will point you towards him. So we see um, Guillermo Maldonado using uh, multiple tactics to really kind of get people sucked into his ministry and almost make them feel like, oh boy, if I really want to do this, I have to listen to this guy. This is the man of God. He's getting direct message from the Lord. He's got an anointing. He's got a mantle. And if I buy in and believe, I will be debt free. This is spiritual manipulation. Okay. As I said, we're going to watch a couple of clips back to back. These will be our last clips. And in these clips, Guillermo Maldonado is actually for one of the few times in this entire message, if you watch the whole thing, is going to try to use scripture. And we're going to see him twist it. And I will come back and show you once again, the tactic that is being used to manipulate people. Three, three, debt is a sign of slavery. A person that is on debt under or have debts that is a sign of slavery and i will show you the bible and so we understand the debts so i want you to see the truth about that and let's go to proverbs 20 22 7 
the truth about that. So I want you to see Proverbs. The rich ruleth over the poor. Lift your hands and read it with me. One, two, three, go. Louder. Come on, come on. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is the servant to the lender. Another translation says, it's the slave to the lender. So what he's saying is, I want you to write this down. The World Bank system has used people's money to bring them onto debt. If the mark of the beast will come right now or tomorrow, people will take it because they are indebted. All right, guys. So in those last clips, Guillermo clearly teaching that if you are in debt, you are a slave. And he attempts to back this up using scripture out of Proverbs 22, verse 7, which I'm going to read quickly. It says, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. Guys, it's really important that when we read the Bible, we understand the different genres uh, that are used when writing. And so it would be important for us to understand that Proverbs, by their very nature, are not necessarily meant to be universal truths that are always applied. They are general truisms is the phrase that I like to use and I've heard used by others. They are general truisms. So here in Proverbs 22, 7, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. That is saying that generally, if you are in a position where you have to borrow and you are in debt, you are generally in a disadvantageous position that you are going to have to pay it off to someone else. That is generally true. And I think that you could look throughout scripture and say, hey, listen, we would see in scripture that if you can avoid it, it's a good thing to not go into debt. We need to be wise with our finances. We need to be good stewards, understanding that all that we have has come from the Lord and we are to use it to bring glory and honor to his name. But we are not to look at this verse. And this is why we, again, have to understand Proverbs and what they are and what they are not, right? That they are general truisms and that this is this is a commentary right here saying the borrower is slave to lender. We need to understand that and not think that literally it means that if you are in debt or if you have borrowed money that you are a literal slave to someone else. A good example of a general truism and how we see that in Proverbs would be if we go to Proverbs 21 verse 17. It says, whoever loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and olive oil will never be rich. Now, let me ask you this. Is it possible that someone could love wine and olive oil and really love opulent things, love a lot of pleasures, and could they be rich? Yeah, we see people doing that pretty regularly. So what does it mean? Is the Bible wrong? No, this is generally true. Generally speaking, if you are overindulgent on these sorts of things and you're chasing after you know, all these grand things with your money, it is generally going to lead you into poverty. But there are certainly exceptions to that. We see this all throughout Proverbs. We see Proverbs that are talking about, you know, if you're diligent and you work hard, that you will come into money. And if you're lazy, you won't. Well, that's generally true. But there are exceptions to that rule, so to speak. And so um, <laughs> there is a reason, though. And let me, let me bring it back around to Guillermo Maldonado. There is a reason he is teaching it this way. And this is the last tactic we are going to look at. And this is common when you have spiritual manipulation take place. This is fear tactics. Guys, this is absolutely making people afraid. He is telling people, listen, if you are in debt, you're a slave. Okay, well, who's going to want to hear, I'm a slave. I'm a slave. Okay, I'm in a bad position. But I particularly have to point out the fact that at the very end, you may have caught it. He said, that the reason people are going to get the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation, the mark of the beast, is because they are going to be in debt. If that is not a fear tactic, I don't know what it is. So now, someone who is potentially attending church, listening to this message, who's in debt, which would be a lot of people, a lot of people have debt, right? They're listening to it and they go, oh my goodness, uh, if, if I don't get out of debt by sitting under the debt-free anointing, under the mantle of the apostle who heard directly from the Lord, and if I believe him, it will rub off on me. If I don't do that, then I might get the mark of the beast, and I'm not going to be saved. This is a fear tactic. Let's look at the book of Revelation, chapter 13, and uh, we're going to look at verses 15 through 17. I'm kind of skipping some of the beginning part here, but this is talking. This is where we see the reference to the mark of the beast. So starting in verse 15. 
The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Now, I just want to point this out because this will very quickly refute. And again, I'm not really trying to go into the details of refuting everything that he said. This entire message is a complete disaster if you watch it in its entirety. But really quick, in verse 16, it forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, rich and poor. So it it didn't matter if you were in debt or if you're incredibly rich, it forced all people to get the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast doesn't have to do with people being in debt. This is crazy, but this is a fear tactic that he is using to get people to buy into his ministry. Guys, as I said uh, just a few minutes ago, my reason in doing this, absolutely number one, is to bring attention to Guillermo Maldonado. He is a person who is ministering to tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people, and he does not understand God's word. He is a manipulator. Um, He yeah, uh, he, he demonstrates very, very bad character. Um, he is not qualified to be in ministry. It is to do that, but more so it's because I think these sorts of things happen all over the place, and I think many people are sitting under ministries that are using similar types of tactics. So I hope that you will be aware. If you see somebody and they're constantly speaking with doom and gloom and, oh my goodness, these sorts of things are going to happen if you don't do this, you don't do this, Well, that's a fear tactic to get you to buy in. If they're talking about the Lord speaking to them all the time, the Lord told me to tell you this, that is spiritual manipulation. If they are saying, you know, I'm an apostle, I have the anointing, I have the mantle, and they're not doing it like, I mean, somebody could stand up and say, listen, I have the anointing because all believers have the anointing. If you are a believer, you are anointed, right? That That's pretty clear from scripture. If they're doing these sorts of things, you really need to run. You need to run far, far away. And I do this because I love the body of Christ, and it really hurts my heart that so many people are sitting under these types of ministries. Guys, get under a pastor that is going to point you to Christ. There's not going to be fear tactics because a good pastor is going to remind you how the story plays out. Yes, they'll tell you the truth about bad things taking place, about persecutions, about sufferings, but ultimately they are going to point you to the blessed hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so guys, let's stay away from Guillermo Maldonado. Let's uh, be alert and let's be discerning when it comes to what people are telling us so that we don't fall for these tricks. Okay, that's it for today, guys. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has been, if you would please consider subscribing to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. But thanks again for watching, and until next time, God bless.